Novalette Monroe was born with recessive dystrophic EB. At 12 years old, she developed a passion for poetry. Indeed, expressing herself became a path to process her struggles. Poetry represented for her a source of strength and a way to figure things out, trying to make sense of the senseless that sometimes life can be. Her poems have been published and they gave courage and strength to people. Graduated with honor at the University of Toronto, Novalette achieved a humanities degree with a focus on philosophy. She became also a peer bereavement volunteer, trying to help people in their daily life and knowing that she is contributing to her community. Novalette's life is accompanied by the constant pain that EB causes. EB has no days off. It is persistent and forces her to cover her arms, legs and other parts of her body with bandages, so as to protect and cure her too fragile skin. Novalette has chosen not to give up in front of EB, but to resist and give hope to other people who are suffering and struggling with their life. But what is epidermolysis bullosa? Epidermolysis bullosa, or EB, is the name attributed to a group of rare inherited skin disorders that cause the skin to become very fragile. Some kids affected by this disease are even called butterfly kids because of how fragile the skin is. Any trauma or friction to the skin can cause painful blisters that may lead to infections and further complications. There are so many types of EB, epidermolysis bullosa simplex, dystrophic epidermolysis bullosa, junctional epidermolysis bullosa, and Kindler syndrome. EB is usually diagnosed by a dermatologist in babies and young children, as the symptoms appear obvious in early development. In some cases, it's possible to test a number baby for EB after the 11th week of pregnancy. EB is caused by faulty genes that make the skin more fragile, and over 300 mutations have been identified and believed to be involved in this condition. Some types of EB are autosomal dominant, while others are autosomal recessive. Epidermolysis bullosa can manifest itself with different symptoms depending on the type. Reactions are commonly triggered by clothing rubs or skin bumping. In general, this condition causes the skin to be fragile and itchy, easily subjected to blisters or sores located especially on the hands, feet, elbows and knees. Other signs of epidermis bullosa include dry skin lumps, thick or undeveloped nails and hair loss. Scalp blistering, unusually thick or thin skin patches, difficulty in swallowing and dental problems, such as tooth decay, may also be observed. Symptoms rarely appear before the toddler begins to walk or engages in activities which trigger a more intense friction of the feet. At the moment, there is no cure available for any of the subtypes of EB, but current treatments can help ease the pain and keep symptoms under control. Treatments are mainly aimed at helping prevent blisters formation, therefore reducing the risk of developing complications such as infection and malnutrition. Moreover, there is a focus on the management of wounds and pain. Wound dressings, along with petroleum jelly or other moisturizing substances, are frequently employed in order to facilitate the body's natural healing process. Silicone-based dressings are the most used, since they are easier to apply and remove, and they protect the wound and peri-wound skin by promoting a favorable environment for wound healing. The dressings are held firmly in position by retention bandages. EB mechanism and new therapies are studied all over the world. Research on therapies focuses on gene editing, stem cells, tissue biomarkers for wound care and antibodies. As of now, there are two promising phase 3 clinical trials which test gene therapies for dystrophic EB. The first one aims to verify the safety and efficacy of EB101 for the treatment of large chronic wounds. It is an autologous cell therapy which corrects the genetic defect directly in keratinocytes. After a biopsy that collects the patient's cells, the keratinocytes are isolated and functional type 7 collagen is transduced into the cells. After their expansion, harvest and incubation, they are transplanted back into the patient. A similar approach is used for FCX007, 
which when administered interdermally delivers functional type 7 collagen at the site of wounds. Phase 1 and 2 of clinical trials are also being carried out, involving a protein replacement therapy that provides recombinant type 7 collagen. In addition to the few examples reported, many trials and studies are in place. Researchers are working hard and results look promising. Finding a cure for EB is not a matter of if, it's a matter of when.